In order for my underhook to be ultimately successful, I have to focus on a couple key points. Those positional points include hand position. This is often the most difficult thing to grasp in this concept because most people are used to coming up and grasping the capsule or coming across and hooking on the opposite side trap. Opposite side trap, I feel, really gives them an opportunity to bite down and bear down on this overhook and it's hard to keep a grip on. On top of the capsule here, he's able to just limp arm and kind of shuffle out a lot of the time. So instead what I'm doing is just a contact grip. Contact grip, I can best describe, we had a rock climbing pull up wall in our basement growing up and one of the spots was just a contact grip that you could slap your hands on and you'd have to pull up without really getting to engage your fingers. And that's what a lot of this position is. So I'm in between his scaps here and also kind of in the T of his spine where his neck runs. It's just that slap contact grip. That's the first thing I'm really looking for. Second thing, I'm looking for head position. He doesn't have much of a neck because he's a, a th thick little short boy, but I'm looking to put my forehead kind of where Dracula would bite someone on the meat of his neck there. That gives me an opportunity to keep him out from getting to his underhook or re -pummeling. This is a good head position to be in with this underhook. The next thing I'm looking to do is really bring this elbow up to the ceiling. If I leave this elbow down, he can start to crank it. He can lock his hands here and really start to crank me down. He might be able to even get an opportunity to get a fireman's off and some of those other counters from an overhook position. In order to neutralize his overhook and make my underhook more efficient, I'm going to really start to raise that elbow. Hip and foot position. These two kind of go hand in hand, but they're really important. In between his feet here is a danger zone. I want to be center stepping in that danger zone the entire time. So again, I'm slap grip on his back, I'm Dracula in his neck, I'm stepping into this danger zone, and with that I'm trying to go belly button to belly button. The best way to do that is while having this elbow up on the back side towards the ceiling, to start to pull him on me. You can see there's a height discrepancy here. We're brothers and we still have this much of a height discrepancy. As a taller guy, it's more efficient to get him to pull his hips up onto me. He's more fortunate being lower, so if he was underhooking and he center step, it kind of just happens naturally for him. Again, being a taller guy, I've got to go elbow to the ceiling and sort of pull him up onto me. This loads my hips. I'm looking to go belly button to belly button, kind of like our belly buttons had magnets in it. The less space is there, the better. Head position, slap hand position, elbow high, pulling up onto me. And the last thing I'm really looking for here is opposite side control. This is where you get to create, get creative, kind of do your own thing here, flow with whatever's comfortable for you. I personally like being on the wrist. I like being on the inside tie. I don't even mind being double under. I know guys that like to go inside out here. There's a lot of different options. It's whatever's comfortable for you. Again, there's variable body types in the sport of wrestling. What works for me might not necessarily work for him because he's a little bit shorter. As long as you're neutralizing that other side though, it should be efficient. The progression out of this then would be to get to all of those points, slap back, elbow up, pulling towards you, Head position, center stepping, controlling this other side. I want to get comfortable in here. It's sort of like an awkward dance. I want to be able to go all directions. I want to be able to go forward. I want to be able to go back. I want to be able to circle to my left. I want to be able to circle to my right. And really move him. Freestyle, Greco, it's important because you can get that push out. Now in collegiate folk style, you can get that push out for the stall calls. You start to really be able to control this guy. He's not going to be able to counter you, but he's also not going to be able to get much of his offense going at all. You're going to smother him and be able to break him with this position. So those are the keys I'm looking for when I get into my underhook.